Hi, Meg. Welcome to the Health Coach Success Podcast. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. We're so excited to have you here. I think you have some unique uh, experience to share with us and a really empowering and uh, different story. So I'm excited to dive in. What we'll do before we get into some particulars is I'd love for you to share with our listeners where you kind of are right now as far as what you're doing, what your uh, main thing in this kind of health and wellness space is. Sure. So right now I have um, a business in my passion called a whole health life. And really I'm just educating and empowering people on what it looks like to actually create health with their lifestyle rather than, um, you know, like being dependent on like, say, you know, pharmaceuticals or, or this or that. So, um, like the whole premise of what I started was that you can really create health by, um, you know, moving your body, eating real food, and then using like targeted supplements as needed for like, you know, what you need to heal, whatever is your root cause of what's going on. Um, so that's what I do. I have, you know, a website, I have an Instagram, and I really just work, um, with people and empowering them and engaging them and talking to people like you. And yeah, it's been super fun. I think that, um, and honestly can feel a little countercultural <laughs> to encourage people to live, a, <clears throat> like a more simple, real, like nourishing life. Um, so it's been fun. That's great. Good. I can't wait to dive in a little bit to the Instagram and website, but I'm curious, have you always had this as a passion? Have you been doing this for a long time? How did you kind of get started in this space? Sure. So I am a doctor of pharmacy by training and I got my pharmacy degree, um, or doctorate, gosh, 11 years ago. (laughs) And, um, I never actually worked in a pharmacy. I immediately, um, in my residency got drawn towards patient safety because I was really shocked at the amount of medication error that occurs in healthcare and just the amount of error in general (laughs) in healthcare. It's, um, it it can feel like a pretty broken system. And so immediately I was drawn into the safety aspect of it, patient safety, um, as well as looking at like the systems kind of like the, the macro level versus like the micro level of like the patient, the patient interaction. So anyways, I spent like the first five years of my career, um, creating like med reconciliation programs, um, supporting the systems and, and various healthcare settings, um, working with providers, all sorts of things. So in med reconciliation, I saw like these medication lists that were like 10 to 20 medications long. All people are on all sorts of medications. Um, lifestyle felt like it was rarely ever part of the conversation. Um, kind of like getting back to the basics, foundation, nutrition, toxins, all these things. So all along that I was working on, um, creating safer systems for patients and reducing medication error. And at the same time, seeing these medication lists and, um, feeling like no matter how much we try to fix this system, like we're really not going about it well (laughs) and patients were just getting sicker. So you put them on one medication for something, and then they would have two more medications for the side effect of their medication. And then another medication for the medication that's causing them side effects. So there is like, you know what I mean? So it was really eye opening for me. And, you know, I do think there's a role for for pharmaceuticals in certain situations, but it just felt like to me, it was, um, we were like going, we're going farther away from how like we're designed and how we can truly heal. And, um, so yeah, like that was all happening in my experience. Um, and then the last five years of my career, Um, I'm more so focused on um, working with providers on appropriate use of antibiotics and also reducing use of opioids, safe use of pain medications, all sorts of things. So opioids, antibiotics, these are two really big major classes of drugs that are chronically overused in in America and our communities. They really, they have, well, obviously opioids have killed so many people and antibiotics have really impacted the lives of many people. And a lot of people don't even really fully realize that. Um, and some people, they're life-saving, right? We need them sometimes, but, um, so much overuse. So, um, kind of through that whole, the last 
10 and a half, 11 years of my career as a pharmacist, I really came to realize that like pharmaceuticals should be safe when we absolutely need them. But then otherwise, I wanted to help people become aware that there are other options to actually heal and to get your, get to the root cause. And something that I wanted to say too that um, I just thought it was, so when you're working at a systems level with like healthcare, um, when there's a problem that goes wrong, there's always something that we do, which is called a root cause analysis. And you have to figure out what was the problem that caused that like, you know, drug error or error in the ICU or whatever it is. Um, you don't really just like put a bandaid on it because you know it's going to happen again. And so I found it interesting that like at a systems level, we all know you have to do a root cause analysis. You can't just like blame a person or put a bandaid on it or silence somebody. Um, but then when it came to like individual health, I'm like, well, we're kind of just putting band-aids on a lot of things and we're not actually getting to the root cause. And you also have patients who have like 100 different reasons that they might have you know, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome or leaky gut or whatever, they can have all different reasons, but we're giving them like the same medications and they're not really healing. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's so many layers to it. And I had a lot of experiences as a healthcare provider that were really eye opening, um, where I felt pretty discouraged with the system in itself with, um, kind of financial biases that are at play. And for me, um, kind of ethically and morally, I wanted to be using my time and my gifts and my education to support people, um, with a job that I fully aligned with. Um, so, so yeah, <laughs> I could go on and on, but that's kind of a quick recap. Wow. That's, it's so interesting. I'm curious, what, was there a place for advocacy like that in, you know, a hospital or in the system, or did you kind of plant yourself there? And like, was it challenging to be, it sounds like it would be a challenging place to be amongst a bunch of medical professionals who are trained to use these pharmaceuticals and kind of be like, well, wait a minute, like maybe this isn't the best way to use them. So I'm, I'm curious if there were challenges in that, in your role. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, I did actually create my position, um, and the first five years of my career to, um, establish those programs to help patients with their medication list because it's really dangerous. Um, so I saw that need and we got published and I created that whole thing and it was kind of like my baby and I was really passionate about it. But what happens is you kind of hit like, a, I found myself hitting a wall within the systems so like you could make progress and maybe some providers are on board. And they're like, yeah, we, you know, we're not doing patients any favors by just dishing them on antibiotics. We want to change something or we want to, you know, like we're with you or what can we do? But then in other ways, some higher up is like, nope, we don't have money to like change that. Or that's not our priority or patients don't like that. And we get paid on patient satisfaction. So we're not going to do that. So like on one hand, you have people who are wanting to change and you have many amazing healthcare professionals who are, are hoping for something different and are also frustrated by the system, but I was still working within the system, yes. which operates within the confines of like quality measures, insurance companies, you know, like all the things. So yeah. And you know, yeah, just like anything, there's challenges, but it's definitely a mess out there in healthcare. I think their healthcare does a lot of good in some ways, but there's just a whole lot of room for improvement. And, um, there's just not an easy way for it to like be fixed right now, <laughs> you know, and there's not really a focus on healing. It's all this, like everything's prioritized based on the reimbursement model. So I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. We're not actually providing patient centered care. And when I realized that the patient really wasn't being the center of the care, you know, most of the time that was when I was like, I just can't work at this higher level anymore and operate within this box, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Cause there's only so far you can go when yeah. there's politics at play and there's so much yeah. polarization. They're like, Oh, that was a great idea, Meg. Thank you for you know taking it this far, but that's as far as it's going to go. And when it's really like this passion, that's, you know, yes. side of you and you see so much more wrong that could be fixed. Yeah. You feel like you're right. kind of, you hit the ceiling and yeah. so that probably brings us to your pivot point when you maybe right. decided to do something different. And then what was that when you kind of made a shift from that setting to something new? Yeah. You know, 
I think towards the end of my, what I was doing with my career, I really became conflicted, like kind of ethically and morally. And I, you know, I remember I was at a point at a conference where I was just like really disagreeing with what was being said about healthcare, patient care, um, what doctors should say to patients, what they should do. And at that point I was like, I don't care if I'm making minimum wage. I want to be doing something that like I align with. And, um, I was just, we were willing to just leave it all and do something that I was passionate about. And, um, I also wanted to be able to work remotely so that I could be with my kids more. And that's also a perk of being a health coach. Um, so eventually I just started actually when I was working slowly, working on building a business, which is what a lot of people do, right? Um, you kind of want to like have something to fall back on. <laughs> um, so I would wake up early and I started, um, my integrative health practitioner certification process. And I would just do that before my kids woke up every morning, even if it was like 20 minutes, um, and just started learning more. And even before that certification process, I was reading a ton. I was questioning kind of what I already you know, like things get so heavily indoctrinated in you. And I was, you know, the past, I'd say four years have really been unveiling, like letting all that go and almost like relearning as a human, as a mom, as a healthcare practitioner, as a pharmacist, all these things. And so, yeah, I really just started following my own interests and reading and learning and getting certified as an integrative health practitioner. And I think, um, after I got certified, it wasn't even the certification that really led to my business being successful. It was me just being really honest with my experience in the, in the, like in the healthcare like industry and healthcare setting as a pharmacist. Um, I saw a lot of, um, I saw some corruption <laughs> and I saw an opportunity to empower people to actually get better. And I started just sharing about that on through my Instagram platform. And I was like, okay, I think I'm made for this. <laughs> and I spent a lot of my career actually educating, empowering providers to do the right thing, empowering healthcare, you know, leaders and quality leaders to how to improve their system, how to, you know, all these things, how to get to the root cause with their medication errors. So I'm really comfortable with working with people, with educating, um, with empowering people. And so it felt really natural. Um, it did feel scary. It did, you know, you're stepping out on a limb and you're doing something different. Um, but yeah, I think people are curious. A lot of people aren't feeling better the way that they're currently being treated. And so when you have like a pharmacist or anyone who's, you know, willing to kind of share their experience that might go against the grain a little bit, um, it can feel inspiring. I think to people to, they don't feel alone anymore. Um, so yeah, my Instagram platform ended up, you know, growing really well and I'm able to work with all these amazing people. And now I have, um, my integrative health practitioner certification that I, you know, I don't see clients right now. I think I will someday, but I'm mostly just like educating, which is really what I love to do. And I do, you know, connect with people obviously online all the time. Um, but I think learning is just almost like the first step of the process. So it feels good to even be doing that. Cause oftentimes before people might see a health coach or might, um, look into their root cause healing, you kind of have to be even exposed to that idea. <laughs> um, there's another way besides just like taking a medication, um, which I'm not, I never want to say that in a judgmental way. I think there is a, you know, that's why I like integrative health. I think there's the right thing for all different people, but, um, I really do think that there's ways to, to heal and to get to what's going on. Um, and often naturally, you know, there's a lot of drugs that are given for things that you can literally reverse with what you eat and going outside and reducing your stress and going on walks. Like yeah. that's amazing. And those side and the side effects of all those things are all amazing anyways. So you're not only, you know, like re reversing your type two diabetes or lowering your blood pressure or reducing your stress or whatever it is, you're getting all the other benefits of nourishment and all those things. So, yes. 
And I even say, put pharmaceuticals aside, even like giving supplements, natural supplements to somebody who's yes. always stressed, not moving their body, not getting enough sunlight. Even totally. natural supplements are like, you're just banging totally. your head against the wall because they're not doing what their body naturally needs or was naturally designed to crave and get. And so the supplements can then even become a Band-Aid. And oh, so just totally. going to the basics is so important for so many people, especially today. Like in this exact moment, in time, nothing could be more true. Where basically we're we're told don't don't get too much sun, stay inside, don't move your body, and also completely detach yourself from people that you love. And what more could a human need than all three three of those things? Right? Totally. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think you hold this unique position where you were in, um, you were conventionally trained, you were a pharmacist. And instead of kind of somebody who's always been in that natural realm, having an opinion right. about stuff, you having been there and been immersed in it, you're kind of this yes. expert who gets to look at it from a different lens. And that's probably uh-huh. why people have, you know, completely attached and, and trusted your, your education on that. So that's such a unique position. Yeah. You know, at, at first when I, kind of the walls came crumbling down for me of like just the system and the complexity and the corruption and the financial bias and like all the layers of healthcare. I was just like, wow. Um, why did I choose that to be like my life career? And I was pretty frustrated and kind of felt just, I don't know what the word is. I don't know. Disappointed. Really. I kind of felt like I'd been cheated on or something like I just, and I, at the end of the day, I'm really thankful that I, that was part of my life because if I honestly, maybe if I didn't go into that, I might not even be where I am today. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't know when I was 18, like, Oh yeah, I should look into like naturopathy or like, that was not, I was like, I want to be a doctor, but I don't like blood. So I'll be a pharmacist. Like, you know, I was 18 and you just make these decisions. And then like, when you get into a school, you feel like you have to do it. Like, you know, so So, yeah, I feel like it is really unique. I wish that oftentimes people that push back on me or tell me I'm dangerous or whatever, like you're saying, like, you know, boost your immune system naturally. It's like can be a dangerous statement. Apparently, I really wish that more people could get inside my head and I'm trying to share more of what I've experienced. Some of it almost feels like too much. (laughs) Um, to fully share it's, it's crazy out there. Um, and you know, I think it is unique and I think it is why people are curious. Um, and the other, like the other thing that I like to share is, um, like I'm a pharmacist and I've seen a lot of dangerous things happen because of drugs. Um, and at the same time, like I always encourage people to like, follow their gut and to own their health. So if someone wants to do all the things, but take medications, then like that's their choice. And their, their life is going to be a result of all their actions. And so whether you're, you know, doing that, like that's your intentional choice, um, versus someone who maybe chooses to go supernatural and, all lifestyle based and take all the holistic supplements, like to own that and to not like to not judge the opposite. And I don't know, I really don't like the wars between (laughs) the two. Like that's why I really love integrative health and I love empowering people to figure out what helps them like truly feel alive. Um, like often the reason why I eat well and why we go outside and go on hikes and all that. Like, isn't necessarily just because I want to get my vitamin C or whatever. Like, I just want to feel awesome. Like I want to feel, have energy for my kids. I want to have energy for myself. Um, I want to be like my dad who was skiing down the ski mountain with my seven-year-old son about a month ago when he was seven, he's 70 almost. Like I want to do that when I'm 70. (laughs) So I like encouraging people to like get to their why and know that like, you know, our actions matter and they give us the energy we need or they don't. Um, and different, everyone's going to have something different for them and we're all super unique. And, um, yeah, I just, it's a passion of mine. (laughs) Um, and the respect, the respect for the respect for what somebody like you is choosing 
you know, because if the respect on both sides is what's important. You're, you're dangerous for wanting to completely naturally support, you know, your right. life, your children's life, be active. No, that's your choice. That's what's making you tick. And right. just because you need to respect side X, well, that, that would need to be respected on your end too. Of Totally. Of yeah, and it's yeah. so important that we all, because we are doing at the end of the day, what we believe is best. And Absolutely. There also, I would argue, which I think this is a part, partly where your passion's coming from. I do think that there are so many people out there that if they were simply in touch with the proper education and the proper knowledge, that they would think differently. But right. on the knowledge that's presented in, in mainstream media culture about health and wellness is not what we're doing. It's about kind of what feeds a different industry. And yes. so getting that information out there is what's so important about reaching people who truly have their best interest at heart, but just don't know any better. Also, there's so much of that. Yes, totally. Yes. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I mean, most people aren't even aware, of, like even like gut health and something that can so greatly impact your, how you feel every day. Like that's not ever, I've never heard that word on the television <laughs> or like in the mainstream and actually gut health is a major indicator in, um, even COVID-19 outcomes. Um, and there's study on that. I forget which journal is published in a major journal, but, um, all that to say, like I had to like dig, I'm a pharmacist in healthcare who spent her half of her career on antibiotics. And I had to like discover that myself. <laughs> so, if you know, like, I think you're right. It's not kind of like at your fingertips. You have to really dig for it. And even sometimes when you dig for it, it's censored within the internet. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that what's presented and culturally isn't necessarily what is best for people, <laughs> um, for their healing, for their wellness, because unfortunately, uh, there's just financial bias. And I don't know if we're ever going to live in a world where that's not the case. Um, I mean, maybe that would be awesome, but you know, there, there just is. And that's what I discovered in my previous work is like, wow, I ultimately am a slave to the financial engine because no matter what I say to these doctors or whoever I'm working with amazing people, they have to do whatever, somebody else is saying, because based on financial priorities, you know? And so, yeah, so it kind of, whether it's on the television or within a system, that's just kind of how it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so I'm curious about the, your Instagram platform and we'll switch gears a little bit and talk about that and how you started that. If that was more about just you sharing your story and it obviously resonated with a lot of people. And so you just gained followers. Were there any challenges that kind of came about with you starting that, that page? Tell me a little bit about that, because I think Instagram pages are one of those things that a lot of people in our I industry look to kind of get started and share their knowledge and empower people. So I'm curious how you got started with that and, and was it challenging or did it kind of just grow steadily? Um, yeah, it did grow subtly. I think I was, um, I connected to a couple other, um, nurses and pharmacists that are kind of doing this and I kind of just saw what they were doing and connected with them. Um, and it, it helped inspire me, I guess you could say I was sharing and do share sometimes about how I think that individuals should have the freedom to decide what pharmaceutical products go in our bodies. <laughs> and I think that perspective from a pharmacist is unique um, because I am against mandated pharmaceuticals based on my years of experience. Stuff comes out on pharmaceuticals always, a year later, three years later, 10 years later. And so I think it should not be allowed to legally force something. And so I think when I started, um, sharing that, um, people were curious, they were curious and joined, or they really didn't like what I had to say. And I think that is hard. Um, you know, I think it's just part of it. And I've learned to accept that it doesn't mean it's, I'm always just, Oh, you know, like, but you know, when you start something and you're saying something that goes against the norm, you do get some challenges or pushback. But, um, I think for having a successful Instagram platform, there's, 
you know, they, I'm thinking actually of creating um, like a module for people as I was able to grow it so successfully. Um, basically a year I was almost to 40 K. And so I think that it's kind of sh- like sharing about health and wellness, but being, you know, like also letting people into your life and your, um, like, I hate the word authentic, but it's true. Like, you know, I was like, don't just be everybody else. Right. So I've just tried to be true to me and to my story and my passion. And I try not to like, I try not to look around a lot and I try to just focus on like serving other people and educating them. And that's what kind of drives me. Um, there's of course ways to make your Instagram platform more desirable for people to look at, um, which is kind of why I want to create a module. Cause I think it actually does. It would help people who are health coaches or whatever. If you have a, sh- a story to share, we all have something unique to share with the world. And if you want to use social media, um, it can be a great way. So, so yeah, I would say it was honestly a lot of hard work too. It's like a job. So, you know, your Instagram, your business is not going to grow overnight. So for me, it was, it's work, you know, I have to come up with content. I have to stay engaged with partners. I'm, you know, all the things, emailing website. I don't have, I don't, I don't have any childcare. I don't have anybody work for me. (laughs) So that's another reason why I don't see clients yet. Um, Cause just doing like my education platform feels like a full-time, it's not full-time really, but um, yeah, it's work. So if people want to have, be a health coach and have a successful Instagram platform, then, you know, just like anything else, it it takes the time and and learning curve and all that. Yes. And I think what so many people have in common in our, you know, wellness industry is we, most people have a story. There was some moment, Mm -hmm. aha moment, whether it was being in a specific industry that opened your eyes or you got really sick and you got really well. And, you know, of course, Mm -hmm. Dr. Cabral's story is there's always something that kind of pushes you to be passionate about shouting it from, you know, the mountaintop and sharing what that is, is usually what inspires others, you know, to listen and follow and all of that. And like you said, you can tell when someone's completely authentic, totally their self and doesn't really care that maybe somebody's going to write them a hurtful message or that they might be unfollowed for saying a specific thing. But for those same people that don't want to hear what you have to say. There's people that do want to hear what you have to say and keeping that in mind is always, always. Yes. And absolutely. I think it's a full-time mental job. You know, you might not be sitting at the computer, you know, creating content for quote unquote eight to eight hours a day, but it's probably always on your mind about your next step, what you're going to share, what you're, and so it can kind of feel like this mental full-time for sure. Even if it's not actual hours, that's full-time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm kind of learning to navigate that. (laughs) Um, I think it's both the beauty and the challenge of being your own boss. And, um, yeah, you know, recently in my head, I've just been like, okay, remember that you're doing this because you, I feel called to, and I truly want to serve people and make me make them aware of kind of what I've learned and empower them. Um, and it kind of frees me of like all the things in my head are like, I'm behind on this or I'm behind on that, or I didn't do that yet. (laughs) So, you know, I think it's, um, yeah, you kind of just have to juggle it and systemize how you're going to run it. Um, yeah, but you're right. It's definitely, I can catch myself thinking about all the time, you know, but yes. And so I'm curious if you have any, this is a little different topic, any other like books or, you know, things that you've kind of done for your knowledge other than IHP, which we talked about and, um, you know, maybe the rain barrel, any other Um, books that you've read that you absolutely love from either a like professional standpoint. So doing what you're doing or just from an education standpoint that you would um, want to share with the listeners. You know what? I can use some recommendations on that. (laughs) Um, I read, I really like the book Dissolving Illusions. It changed my perspective a lot um, on the history of infectious diseases. Um, Really like that book. And yeah, I grappled with that whole, you know, I think we're all always learning. Um, But even today, I mean, our whole life is shaped on infectious disease right now. Um, So it's a very, very enlightening book Um, and empowering, honestly. Um, 
but and yeah, that's what I, knowledge is having knowledge is, is empowering because, and I think that's, you know, what the, what the passion is behind is if more people yes. know more people get empowered. And so getting the knowledge is kind of the first step to the whole empowerment process. Yes, absolutely. No, it's so true. I think that, you know, it does make you kind of like hungry for more. So I kind of just have to take it off uh, step by step. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think I have a lot more to learn in the future and I'm excited about that. But the past year has really been, um, just, I, I read a lot of article I want studies, I guess you could say, um, and things like that, like, uh, primary literature. And I share, I try to share evidence like that a lot. Cause I think that people do relate to evidence, but I also have cautions around evidence because it can be also have financial bias and it can be funded by pharmaceutical industries and it's probably going to change in six months. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but no, I haven't read like a whole library of natural health books, but you know, I, I want to. <laughs> yeah, that's great. No, that's, I think your recommendation is great. If you were to give one piece of advice, we had, you know, listeners listening in and they were like, wow, you know, sounds great. I totally want to shift my focus and start an Instagram page or, you know, move into another realm. What would be one piece of advice that you might give to someone listening, kind of wanting to change a little bit of their focus? In regards to like health coaching? Yeah. Or or, no, or being in maybe one position. So you were, you know, doing a lot of stuff with the pharmaceutical advocacy and you were doing that. And Mm -hmm. then you decided, okay, this is my glass ceiling. This is, I, there's not really Uh another place for me to go here with this passion. I'm going to change directions at that change direction point. Like, what does that take? Is there a piece of advice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have, for me, it didn't happen overnight. And I would say, really give yourself time to figure out what you know to be true and what, what gives you life and what can help give somebody else life. Like, what do you, what is unique about you or what do you feel like? So in the last year, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm working and I'm, you know, have a profitable business, but actually I, this doesn't feel like work. Like, whereas when I used to go to work, I'm like, this feels like work. (laughs) Like I was going to work. I wasn't like, I wouldn't say I was having fun at all. You know, I felt, I felt inspired. I felt passionate about saving lives, preventing adverse drug events, cleaning up people's med lists, reducing use of antibiotics. Like I felt passionate about the topics I was working on, but what, but I didn't, but it felt like work. Whereas now if I go sit at a coffee shop and I get to work on my business for four hours that I love it. I'm like, I, you know, I might feel like I didn't get everything done and that's not a good feeling, but I'm like, I have a, I have ideas longer than I can write for my business. Cause I have so much passion around it. And so I'd say, think of whatever it is. That's like, actually makes you feel alive. Like, what would you want to do and get paid for? But you're like, wow, I'm getting paid for this. Um, <laughs> I think that, and I think that once I'm like, I didn't even go into this to like be just as profitable as my old job or be more profitable. But once you're doing it, you're like, wow, you can make a living doing something that you're passionate about and that you love like a really good living. That's amazing. And I didn't go into it for that. I actually went into it to be ethically and morally aligned with what I was, how I was spending my days. And I, God truly called me into what I'm doing and stepping out of that and stepping into something else. So I didn't go into it like for like a business. <laughs> I didn't even, wasn't really part of my register. I mean, I was like, Oh yeah, that's cool. You can be a health coach and you can make money and that's great. We all need to feed our families. Right. Um, but I, yeah, like what makes you tick and you know, what is unique about you? And I think that's a great, great thing to, to ponder. And then, yeah, there's lots of resources out there on how to like take your next step after that. So, yes. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful point. And I love the fact that you use the word 
you get to go and work on your business for four hours. It's a simple word shift of like, I have to go work on my business for four hours versus I get to, and I'm so careful about using that language with my kids. Like mom gets to go to work and help people versus like, I have to go to work now because it's an inspiring way to talk about what you're going to do for a living. And it is what you will do for your living years. And Yes. You have to, yes. Like you said, you have to feed a family and you have to make a living, but you also can do, choose to do it in a way that it fills you up rather than completely draining you. And it's such a, yes. it's just a simple word shift it makes a huge difference in that, that. Yes, absolutely. And it's like, what are we teaching our kids? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. so like you're saying, they're listening to everything we're saying. So of course, of course. This has been such a great interview. It was so fun. And I would love for you to share with the listeners, especially I'm sure they're dying to know where they can uh, hear more about, you know, I want you to share your Instagram name and um, your website, whatever kind of they, where they can get more information and get in touch with you. Sure. So I am at Meg Kilcap, but um, my Instagram handle is a whole health life, a W H O L E health life. Um, and my website is just a whole health life.com. So, um, yeah, we're going to start actually, I'm going to start blogging a lot more about health and wellness, but also what it looks like to work remotely and travel with kids and kind of share other benefits of, you know, doing your own thing. So it's going to be fun. That's great. Thank you. Best of luck with everything. Thank you for being a guest on today's show and we hope to talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks, Meg. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye.